What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we are checking out the Wild 8 again. It's been through like five or six patch cycles. It's been a while since we touched on this game. In fact, I think I was playing this right when I moved into my new house, as I recall. And so it's been about six or seven months since we put in a little bit of time with the Wild 8. And so I thought we'd check back in on it and see what the game has going for it. Because it's had its bunker update. It's had its black door update. It's had some monster updates. It's had a whole bunch of stuff going in. And so there should be some content to explore here. So let's go ahead and start the game off. We'll be playing single player. Uh, hunger and cold are reduced. Nah, we're going to play on survivor mode. Survivor mode is the way that the developers intended. Then damn it, that's the way that we're going to play it, bro. I would not fight a bear that big with a spear. That's not a good enough weapon. So now we got to choose our character. We've got Anna. She's a pharmacology student, so her medical supplies are twice as good. Not that great. Don't care about that. Robin is a young athlete who specializes in the biathlon. He's fastest and most agile. Pretty good. Uh, this guy has melee attack power and stamina recovery speed. That's pretty good, too. Plus 10 defense, and he's got cold defense, so that's pretty good. Uh, minus 10% to the cost of learning skills. She's got crit chance, wood, and ore. And then we've also got Jeffrey, who has better durability on his crafted items. And then we have Oliver, who builds stuff. I'll probably go with Robin this time around. I think it's who we played last time, too. But frankly, he fits my play style. So let's go ahead and check this thing out and see what is going on here. So we have woken up. We've got to walk around. Thank God I'm still in one piece. Ooh, there's northern berries over here. Hooray. And then we've got some northern mushrooms right there. Nice. And then there's some canned food. Actually, a lot of canned food. That's going to keep us running for a little bit. What is this over here? So we've got a so we've got the ability to build, and so we can do that with the B key. That's gonna bring up our little tent over here. And actually, my suggestion is, does this still work? Yeah, the fire that's inside the plane still works. So I'm gonna put in my shelter right here. As I recall, I think your shelter is like your save point or something like that. Or no, you level up through it. That's what it is. And so you can go here and you can level up your abilities. And so it wants us to learn sprint. We can now sprint. We can sprintinate. Yay! I'm gonna rotate the camera a little bit because I'm not used to playing from this angle i think the last time i played the game i don't know maybe the map randomly generates i i'm not entirely too sure about that but maybe the map randomly generates i can't cook anything right there uh we need to get wood and ore so let's go ahead and get that started i do remember punching a lot of trees when i played this game last time and i remember punching trees was not tremendously effective but it was effective enough sometimes you just got to get some things done let me gather this stuff up so having the stuff we need right now in order to make the workshop, the workshop is going to be our principal crafting location, in case you were wondering. Uh, this game is kind of unique in the sense that when you build a crafting bench, you actually carry it around with you. So I can pack up my crafting bench and keep it with me for later. So if you missed my last series, I'm going to go through and explain things uh, as we play. But essentially, that was the way that it worked before, is you would upgrade this stuff. If you died, you lost all your upgrades. But at the same time, it wasn't so bad because you got to start over and you go loot your corpse again later on after you died. So we can make sticks. I don't really want a stick. We can make a stone axe, which I think is probably the best idea here. If we can get a stone axe moving, I think that'll make me pretty happy. So let's get started on that for right now. And then once I've got the stone axe all done, then we'll make the pickaxe and we'll start getting some resources together because in this game, you really do want to have like a good grip of resources. A pretty good grip of resources. We also want to make a campfire so that we can cook food. Uh, we do have berries available to us right now. And there's some more over there too. It looks like they actually eased up on the beginning of the game. The last time I played, this game could kill you like in the first five minutes if you just didn't adapt fast enough and figure out what was going on. But yeah, we can pick up some more berries. Either that or we just got lucky with our world spawn. I don't know. Last time I played this game, there was no food anywhere. You really had to get out there in the sticks to find anything useful. And so this time around, it looks like we've lucked into at least a day or two's worth of food right at the beginning. So I... Oh, don't throw the berries. Eat the berries. Oh, yeah, I need to warm up, too. Here, let me go around my workbench. I've actually accidentally created, like, a fence around the fire over here. There we go. And so we sit next to the fire for a little bit and eat some food. Three of them should be enough to even us out for a little while. I think. Like, we won't be covered, for, like, long term, but we'll be alright for now. It looks like it's nighttime. I do have the ability to sleep. That's one of the reasons why you put your shelter right here so close, is if you get 20 wood, you can sleep inside of here, so when there's storms and whatnot, you can sleep out the storm. But if you put it next to a fire, you can actually sleep inside of there and get warmer instead of it just staying even the entire time. Oh, I can't see so well. But I do want the stone axe, so there it is. We've got a stone axe. I'm going to put that in the one slot right there so that we can gather it on up. And then we also have room for a pickaxe, but our inventory is full. 
Okay, don't eat the mushrooms without cooking them. Uh, that's a bad plan. You definitely want to, you definitely want to cook the mushrooms before you eat them. We got a basic campfire right there. I think that's a good idea. Let's go chop down a tree real quick. We've got access to a axe now, and so if I, there we go. If I press the F key, we can go ahead and slot that in, and that'll help us chop twice as fast. Not like crazy quick, but better than we were able to chop before. And so down goes the wood. Oh, look, we got some bonus wood, too, and the tree fell down. Nice. I think things stack to 40 in this game, if I remember right. I don't recall. They might stack to 40. They might stack to something. But we want to get our resources together before we start adventuring out. That's the biggest part right now, is that we kind of just want to survive off the things that we have. And there we go. I'll use the energy bar. We'll warm up next to the fire for a minute so that we don't end up super dead. Perfect. Uh, you are going to be eating a lot in this game, so get used to that factor. The med kit will save for later. It's not incredibly useful for right now, but it is useful. All these buildings can be upgraded as well if you get the proper parts for them. Uh, this requires 40 wood and 40 stone to upgrade. We wanted a pickaxe next, though, because I wanted to get a couple stacks of good stuff before we went any further. Now then, we should have an inventory key around here somewhere. Yep. And we can put that in right there. And now that we've got that in, we can press the X key. And we can swap between tools real fast if we need to. Unfortunately, we're cold. Unfortunately, we're cold. So i got to wait until we warm up. All right. And so now that we're squared away, morning has arrived. So that's going to take a little bit of the pressure off, too. It actually looks like the wood stacks higher than it used to. I'm pretty sure it only stacked to 40 before. Our items do have durability, so they are going to break as we're running around farming and doing all kinds of random stuff. We're also going to hit a stopgap at the point. There's going to be a point that we reach where we need leather to do just about everything, as I recall, unless they've changed that around since the last time we patched through. So we got a gathering skill point right there. That's really good because we can apply that to our character and make it a little bit more... Make us a little bit more robust as a survivor. As a further side note, you can also take the ore and you can put it inside of a furnace. And when you put it inside of a furnace, you can turn it into, uh, I think, iron. I think is specifically what it becomes. There's a little bit more. Yeah, they increase the stack sizes. That's good because when I was playing the game last time, you ended up with just stacks and stacks and stacks all over the place of stuff. Let's go eat a can of food real quick. We are going to have to venture out and explore pretty soon. Don't worry too much about our dwindling food supply. There's actually a lot of food available in this game. It's all over the place. And you should be able to get your hands on it pretty easily. Let's upgrade this. It's 40 and 40 to upgrade that. That's going to give us level 2, which gives us battle claws and enhanced stone axe. But I think we need sinews for that. I can make wooden shoes and stuff like that at level 2, though, which will make us a little bit safer. We can also make rabbit's foots, healing salves. We can make rabbit traps. There's a bunch of little things in here that you can craft. Let's do our gathering level two. So we've got a gathering level right here. We get a backpack upgrade. So there it is. We get an extra slot. Hell yeah. I love using this right here. And just I get tons of backpack upgrades. It's my favorite. So it wants me to build a campfire right now. I suppose I probably should. Uh, that allows us to cook off any of the mushrooms that we find. I'll put it right there. So we've got like a nice little area. Apparently we're breathing out all kinds of frosty goodness. And so now we shove fire into it until we light the campfire. And it will stay lit for a little while. Uh, the big thing that you want to be able to do here is you drag and drop mushrooms onto there, and that'll allow you to cook mushrooms. And mushrooms actually make a pretty good meal. A couple mushrooms a day will keep you, keep you trucking, in all honesty. Uh, they're, they're not bad. They're better than the berries. I'll put it like that. So I do have a map. That's a thing to keep in mind. Uh, if I go east right now, it's actually a grid-based map, and there will be little things in each area. Oh, it wants me to make a torch. Okay. I'm going to skip the tutorial because I don't think that matters anyways. I don't feel like doing the weird little things that they got me going on right now. I just wanted to show you the basics of the game real quick before we got started. But at this point, the point of the game is to explore. And there will be a storyline. You will be looking for areas to go to. And it will tell you that in your little quest log up here. But as you go through the game, you'll also find like side quests and stuff like there's some herbs right there. Okay. Herbs are good. Uh, you use, if you don't know what herbs are for, use herbs for healing. If you can get your hands on a bunch of herbs, you can heal up. And so we've got some mushrooms right there. There's a bush full of berries. Sounds good to me. Uh, did we make it to the next grid square yet? Oh, wow. We made it super far out. Let's try and go north a little bit. Basically, what I want to do for right now is I just want to stockpile some food. It looks like we maybe have a black box. Oh, this is the front of the plane right here. This is the front of the plane. Okay. This is like my nightmare, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I have a huge phobia of flying. Like a massive phobia. It's it's irrational. Ooh, peanut butter. Yay, I like peanut butter. Um, I have a phobia of flying. I fly because you got to do stuff in life. Like, you can't just, like, sit around your house and not travel and things like that. But at the same time, I don't like flying at all. I am a nervous flyer. And I don't care what statistics you tell me. People are always like, oh, you got a better chance of getting struck by... I don't care. I hate being in a plane. It's the lack of control. 
I hate it. I just don't like flying. I still fly. I don't complain on the flight either. I will sit there quietly and just pretend like everything is okay. But deep down inside of me, it's not okay. It's definitely not okay. Uh, we've got another energy bar right there. I don't know what that is right there, but we got mushrooms. Uh, where am I right now? Okay, so we're a little bit across that grid right there. We can warm up next to this fire if we stand next to it. Make sure you're using environmentals to help yourself out. Seriously, use environmentals. If you stand next to, like, environmental flames, like burning pieces of fuselage and whatnot, it will raise your heat meter. And if you've got to sit there and eat anyways, you might as well do it next to a strategic location. Uh, at night, you're going to want to watch out for wolves. Uh, wolves do start to spawn at a certain point, and they can be... A bit of a pain in the ass if you aren't ready for them that's the part that I would say is if you're not ready for them they can be a pain but once you get to the point where you're strong enough to fight wolves you should be all right oh good it's an active map I didn't even realize it was an active map it's been long enough since I played that I wasn't even too sure I could have smacked that bunny right there that was hella dumb of me I should have just squeezed on it should have squeezed on a bunny ever ever squeezed on a bunny squeezed on a bunny so another feature of your shelter is that as you upgrade it so let's say we upgrade this right here it gets storage slots, and it allows you to level up even higher. So we got a mobility upgrade. Uh, increases protection from the cold while you're moving. Sounds good to me. That sounds really, really awesome. I'll take that right there. Some people have said that this looks a little linear to them. Uh, the reason why it looks linear is because once you unlock the next part, um, you can still upgrade. I'm sorry. The reason why it's not linear is that there's multiple levels to each of these. As you get further down the chain, you can still choose to spend points on previous things uh, and level them up completely instead of sitting around just being like, I don't know if I want that right now. So we're all warmed up. I have, is that an axe or a pickaxe in my hand? That is an axe. Let's continue shopping trees and get some resources together. We're going to upgrade as much of our workbenches as possible. I do like the way that they buff the wood drops too. That's pretty sweet. Was not expecting to see that. But yeah, you get the wood, is it drops a lot better. Now, I don't think wood dropped like that the last time you chopped trees. They just fell over and then you couldn't chop the tree anymore. And so we've got some wood down here. There we go. 60 wood should be good enough. And I'm going to swap over to the pickaxe. And if I can get like 30 or 40 of this stuff over here back together, I think we'll be able to upgrade our workshop. And that'll be two things ready to go. As far as other builds we can get into, uh, we can make storage chests. We can make ourselves a furnace. One of the big reasons why you want to farm early in the game and make sure you're... What is that right there? A blizzard. Oh, that's not good. We probably want to go inside during the blizzard. It might be a better idea just to kind of duck inside because our cold is going to take a massive hit while we're in the blizzard. I am also going to break out the good food for right now. Break out the good food. There it is. So we broke out the good food. Got to break out the good food. Got to do some funky shit. We don't love some funky shit. Everybody loves some funky shit. Sometimes you gotta put some funk on it. So let's see how high these stack. So they stack to 80. Okay. Bro, you're gonna warm up just fine in just a minute. You're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. But don't let that meter run out. Oh my god, if that meter runs out, you're about to have the worst day ever. Uh, normally what you would do right now is you would try to sleep out the blizzard. That's pretty much the way that it goes, is you would try to sleep out the blizzard before you continue traveling. You would do that by dropping your tent and just sleeping inside of it. Now, your hunger does go down faster, I think, when you're sleeping or something like that. I don't recall exactly. But we do want to start looking around, and the grid in this game is enormous. That's the map right there. Like, the map is pretty big. And this game takes a turn that you wouldn't quite expect part of the way through. Our next upgrade is going to take 45 and 45. Okay, it gives us an extra storage slot, so that's good. I can also upgrade this guy right here. And so there it is. We now have a level 2 workshop. We can make enhanced stuff if we can get our hands on some tendons. Uh, it kind of depends. I don't know if we're going to be able to get our hands on tendons for right now. We probably want to get a weapon first before we start doing any combat. You don't want to be doing combat with improvised tools. It's just, it's not going to work out. It just isn't. It just isn't. So just accept now that you're not going to be able to run up on like a boar and smack it with a hammer and it's going to fall over. That's just not the way that this game plays. It's not something that's going to work out. Oh, we do have a blizzard coming through. I'm going to try and plug north and just kind of see what happens. There's a boar right there. I don't want to get too close to him. But I will grab those mushrooms. When you put campfires on the map, they stay there forever, by the way, so that you can use them as waypoints to get in between locations. Uh, in case you were wondering about that, that is also a valid option. In fact, you're supposed to. Uh, you probably should do that because it'll make your life a little bit easier when bad things start to happen. And so I would put them in clearly accessible open areas that are not hard to see. 
Uh, the campfire is lit. Let me get some more food inside of me. There we go. Because we are in a blizzard, we are going to go through wood super, super rapidly trying to keep this fire up. It's just a part of the game. It's okay, though, because we have lots of wood, so it's not that big of a deal. I've got fried mushrooms right there. Hopefully, my thought is that we can ride this out. Yeah, keep that thing lit. Here, get a little bit more wood. Get a little bit more wood. There we go. And so now the blizzard has taken its course elsewhere. We're not that hungry right now, but I am going to eat one more mushroom. And let's take a look at our map here and see what we can find. It looks like we've set some kind of gully or some kind of ravine over here, it looks like. I thought that was a wolf for a second. We can't deal with a wolf right now. We would actually really prefer to avoid wolves at the moment. Bad things will happen if we start messing around with wolves right now. They are much tougher than we are. So there's some more mushrooms. And there's some herbs right there. And some further berries just to keep ourselves fed. And it looks like we've got ourselves yet another blizzard, unfortunately. We're not having a whole lot of luck here when it comes to the weather. I wish that we were, but we ain't. So let's hang tight for a minute. And then what I'm going to do is we'll drop a shelter right here. And now that the shelter's dropped, we cannot sleep. We need 20 wood in order to sleep. There we go. So we got our 20 wood. Let's sleep until the blizzard goes away. Uh, you can enable automatic sleep extension for 20 wood and 5 ore every couple hours. Okay. I'm going to hop up right now. That probably wasn't even worth it, in all fairness. That was kind of one of those things that... A eh, little bit of an overreaction, but it'll be fine. I'm trying to look for a location right now where we can find, like, a fire axe or we can find some kind of emergency items because we are up in the Canadian north, as I recall, or, like, we're in Alaska or something like that. I don't remember exactly where we are, but we're something like that. I'm going to get enough wood to where, if I need to, I can pitch a shelter or at least start a fire. There we go. All good to go. Straight to the north we go. Let's see if we find anything good. Worst case is that we got to dip back to where we came from. But for right now, let me uncover this cube as well over here. Nothing. Okay. And it's definitely a little iffy out here. It's definitely a little iffy out here. Let's go back to base. There's a mushroom right there. I saw it. I saw the mushroom. It's not that I missed it. It's just that we don't have time right now. Uh, he needs a way to warm up and fast. Where is the uh, the campfire at? There it is. Goody, we got ourselves another blizzard, too. It does seem to be blizzarding right now. It do seem to be blizzarding. Let me see if that gets my meter filled back up, and then we'll make a break for home. So as fast as I can go back to the south, we'll try to get back to our free fire, which is in the sight of the fuselage of the plane. Uh, that thing is, uh, seriously, it's a really good resource. And I've seen a lot of people play this game and not use it. You should absolutely be using it. There goes our health right there. It's because we need to warm up. There we go. Just got to get inside the range of the fire. You'd be amazed how many people I've seen playing this game that don't use the fire inside the fuselage. They keep using their own wood and like their own resources to make stuff work. Don't do that. Just, just don't do that. Like, Definitely use this fire right here so that you can save up on wood and not waste it all. I'm gonna get another stone axe. I'm gonna get another stone axe cause I really want it. Got that stone axe, put it in my hand, gonna mine my way through timberland. Alright, so the other thing that we need is we have a campfire over here, right? So there's the campfire. Let's go ahead and cook that up right there cause we're gonna need some food pretty shortly too. And I am going to farm up a little bit more wood. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's a lot of resources around where we are. We lucked out the last time we played the game in the fact that there was pretty solid resources. There was like a, I think a game development company that was like right up to the north of us, like on the next square. And that was really good for us. That worked out great. I might make multiple campfires. No, don't eat that. Oh, you ate the wrong thing, man. Yeah, now we got the poops. Now we got the crazy poops. I uh, might use a... No, I don't need to use a med kit. A med kit might be a little bit of an overreaction because you do heal whenever you eat. And so it takes a little while to get healed up. But it is worth it maybe just to kind of resist for a bit. I'm going to eat a couple of berries, but don't overeat. If you overeat, you get like a vomit debuff. 
and it makes you like throw up or something like that and you lose a bunch of your hunger and it ends up not being worth it so just don't do it we're going to cook up a few more mushrooms bam 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 and that is going to be our dinner for the future and so what i'll start doing is i'm going to start whittling on our northern berry supply and after we've utilized that that's when we'll start using the fried mushrooms so we'll go over to here. There we go. A couple more of those just to get ourselves filled back up and get our health looking a little bit more put together. And we're going to travel to the south this time. A little bit to the south. As we travel to the south, I am going to be chopping trees and kind of getting resources and keeping an eye on stuff. Just because this game is about hoarding. You really want to hoard as much as you can. You want to use a similar mentality in this game as you do when you play the long dark. You just want to make sure like you always have food around. You always have like extra just little bits and bobs sitting around in your inventory and if you don't I mean you level up by staying alive and you lose all of your level ups when you die uh, the game is not over when you die but you do 100% lose all of your level ups and so try to stay alive as long as possible because some things just go up innately like mobility and that's just all there is to it and then other things how busted up is my pickaxe right now because we're a little bit low on ore too this might not be the best place to do this but I'm hoping we end up with decent weather for the day so that we can actually explore and look around. I mean, I can go to the east to find the crash site. It's not that big of a deal. How far to the east is the crash site? Oh, it doesn't mark it. I thought it used to mark it. Maybe it doesn't. We also got gathering too, which is great because I can upgrade my backpack size one more time. Got a couple of candy bars sitting around inside of there that I think they need company. They look a little lonely to me. Don't they look lonely to you? I don't know. Only lonely. Uh, I don't see anything over here. Little scoutable areas here and there, but we'll probably want to cut back to base pretty soon. Basically do like a big loop. And then if we can gather up food, that takes effort off later, so I don't have to sit around scavenging and cooking further on in the future. There is a pass right there. You can cross those logs when you come across them every now and again, so keep that in mind too. Is that it's a risk. If you fall, it's really going to hurt. But if you make it, sometimes there's good stuff on those little bluffs. Sometimes there's like dead bodies or other times there'll be like military guys. They might have like armor or something like that. That's right. This game has armor. This game has all kinds of stuff you can find around. I think I found, we found like Fallout style like power suits and stuff like that the last time we played the game. Tell, I'm telling you, this game takes turns with the storyline that you really don't expect. I'm going to get my warmth up right here, and we're going to call it a day. Uh, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for a check back into the Wild 8. We'll be doing a couple more episodes. This is going to be a little bit of a longer series. Uh, just fair warning, this is not an impression series. This is more of a just me playing the game because I feel like playing it here today. Uh, so anyways, we're going to check back in, see what the game's added, and see what the game's got for us. Hope you guys enjoyed it so far, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for stopping in.